Welcome to the Rochester, New Hampshire History Podcast, a monthly show that will shine a light on a piece of history that has been all but forgotten. The early 1900s was known as the dead ball era in Major League Baseball. Back then, games were played in huge ballparks that limited hitting for power. Balls were overused and deliberately defaced and scuffed by pitchers, which resulted in a ball that became soft. Not many home runs were hit, and the games were usually low scoring. It was during this era that one of the most talented baseball players ever to call Rochester home played in the major leagues. That player was George Magoon, who played Major League Baseball from 1898 to 1903 for several teams. George was born in St. Albans, Maine in 1875, and his family moved to East Rochester in 1885. He started playing baseball at an early age and was a natural at playing the infield. He eventually played for the East Rochester baseball team. Back then, Rochester was a strong baseball town and produced several teams that competed throughout the state and New England. Dr. Forrest Key, an East Rochester resident and a former minor league ball player, immediately saw the raw talent and joy. Dr. Key, in 1895, arranged a tryout for him with the New England League, which was a minor league outfit. The tryout was a success, and Magoon signed with the Portland Main team. From 1895, to 1898, George played for two different teams, the Portland Maine team, which had no known team name, and the Brockton Shoemakers out of Massachusetts. In 1896, he had 105 hits and 397 at-bats. More importantly, he led all third basemen in fielding percentage. If he was to make it to the major leagues, it would be with his ability to play defense. George's opportunity came in 1898. The National League's Brooklyn Bridegrooms were in need of a shortstop. The manager of Brooklyn, Charlie Ebbets, had tried several players at this position, but he was not satisfied with any of them. The New York Times even reported the Bridegrooms were weak at shortstop. Even though Magoon was playing third base in the minor leagues, he got the call to play shortstop for Brooklyn. George Magoon played his first major league game in June of 1898. The New York Times soon reported the addition of Magoon at shortstop has greatly strengthened the team. That year, Magoon played in 93 games. He had a 224 batting average, 39 RBIs, and one home run. Brooklyn finished the year poorly with only 54 wins compared to 91 losses. After that season, George was traded to the Baltimore Orioles for infielder Bill Dallin. The first half of the 1899 season, George played shortstop, and the team led the major leagues in turning double plays. In August, George was traded again, this time to Chicago, for infielder Eugene DeMontreville. That year, he batted 242, which was an increase of 18 points from 1898. That offseason, George returned to East Rochester and worked in the mills. In 1900, George found himself out of the major leagues, though this would be temporary. That year, he played second base and shortstop for the Indianapolis Hoosers of the new American League. He played in 120 games with his usual great defense and a 310 batting average. George returned to the major leagues and played second base for the Cincinnati Reds from 1901 through 1903. In 1901, he had his most successful major league season. In 127 games, he earned a 252 batting average and stole 15 bases. That year, on May 4th, tragedy was averted when the Reds were playing in St. Louis, when a discarded cigar lit the grandstands on fire at League Park. The fire quickly spread in the wooden grandstands. Players from both teams helped the fans out of the grandstands to help keep everyone calm. In 1902, George hit 272 in an injury-shortened season. The highlight of his season was on July 15th, when he hit a pair of doubles off the great pitcher, Christy Matheson. Soon after, he was hospitalized with severe rheumatism, which kept him playing for the rest of the year. In the off-season, a newspaper article stated he had recovered and been playing ice polo all winter and was in the best shape. In the beginning of the 1903 season, he was traded to Chicago for two players, Tom Daly and Cozy Dolan. That year, his average fell to 228, though he was still considered a defensive specialist. After that season, no major league team wanted him due to his weak batting average. 
and just like that, his Major League career was over. For the next few years, George continued to play baseball all over the country for several minor league teams. In 1904, he played for the Indianapolis Indians, Toronto Maple Leafs in 1905, Des Moines, Iowa in 1906. 1907 to 1909, he played for the Trenton Tigers in New Jersey. In 1910 and 1911, he went down to Georgia and managed the Savannah Indians. By 1912, his playing days were over, but George would go on and coach both of the University of Maine and University of New Hampshire teams. In his later years, he worked various jobs in Rochester, such as city clerk, city marshal, and a special police officer at the Rochester Fair. In Rochester, on December 6, 1943, George Magoon was found in the morning, unresponsive by his wife. Dr. Key, his old mentor, came to George's house and pronounced him dead. He died of a heart attack during the night at his home on High Street. He was 68 years old and left behind his wife, Helen, and two sons. He once told a newspaper reporter, I love baseball and would rather play than eat. His major league career batting average was 239. He hit two home runs and drove in 201 runs. This ends the podcast. If you have any questions or comments, please email bobgriffinpodcast at gmail.com and come back next month for another episode of Rochester, New Hampshire History.